everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. I'm not going to keep doing that. Uh, this is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Save it for when wrestling really matters. Ah, shut up. <laughs> and also, awesome brony reviewer, Silver Quill. You've got a comic that's new, then it's time for a review. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <sighs> Bonso is ready. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. No, we are not reviewing the wrestling comic that is on the main arc, the, uh, oh. the main series that is coming out later. Today we are going to be reviewing uh, Friends Forever issue number 10, starring Flutterside and Iron Will, written by Christina Ricci with art by Agnes Garbowska. Oh, we finally yeah. hit the double digits. Yep, yep. <laughs> and James, you hurt my feelings. I thought we were going to review the wrestling arc. Oh. We're not. We're going to be... I was doing the Macho Man whatever I was doing impression of. <laughs> because of Iron Will. <laughs> I, do but... love, I do love that wrestling arc. <laughs> but never mind. That one is I... another story for another day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to be reviewing the French Forever issue number 10 starring Fluttershy and Iron Will. And uh, the story of this uh, of this comic is actually... Rather neat, it's rather simple, but it's one of those comics where the less you know about it, the more you enjoy it, because it does take some twists and turns that doesn't, uh, that, uh, that, that were actually unexpected, at least for me. Uh, so right away from this moment on, guys, a spoiler warning, if you haven't read the comic yet, uh, stop listening to us, go check it out on the Comixology app, or go buy it on your local comic shop if, if you're lucky enough to get the comics in your comic shop. And, then come back to listen to us. Uh, so, guys, what did you think of this uh, of this comic? What uh, what are your feelings about uh, about this one? And like always, inverted alphabetical order. So we start with Mister Quill over there. Well, I feel kind of bad for Fluttershy because it feels like she hasn't really gotten a comic to shine in a while. This one didn't stand out so much. She's being calm and patient, but she never really all the focus is on Iron Will. So in terms of she's doing something as a friend and looking very positive doing so, a lot more positive than the other ponies. But she really doesn't get a lot of standout or identifiable moments herself, which is, in my eyes, unfortunate. But my goodness, what is it about Iron Will that brings out the worst in the ponies? Because for all the bad advice he might give, they treat him so poorly. <laughs> so it, it, Incredibly poorly. It's the whole don't judge a pony for their looks. Now, if they're a miniature, that's fine. You can judge all you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call him uh, a monster to his face. I uh, <laughs> Go on, go on. <laughs> and it's just, and it's just uh, it's, it is a simple, straightforward uh, story, but just shows that these ponies are actually impossible to please, and I'd probably blow my top at them myself. The way I look at this is, um, Iron Will is a character where he, he has his ways of thinking. Like he has, he, he's a motivational speaker. So he has his way of thinking. And for him to suddenly change and ask for help from Fluttershy of all ponies, that's a change. And weren't it every pony, like the main six here or, Five of Fluttershy's friends, or even six of Fluttershy's friends here, are concerned for her. And the way Fluttershy, how to put this, the way Fluttershy deals with it was pretty awesome. I, <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I, I can perfectly see where, um, where you guys, uh, may be coming when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to your feelings about Iron Will, because that one episode, <laughs> That is the one and only episode of this show that if I catch it by a glimpse or anything, I will just walk away, keep walking, <laughs> keep walking, go into another state, get in a plane, go to another country, just keep me away from that episode because to me it's unwatchable. I hate putting your hoof down. It is, it is a very unpleasant, difficult to to sit through episode that I didn't like at all. So, James, when you hate it, do you hate Fluttershy or do you hate Iron Will? I I hate everyone. Hmm. I hate Fluttershy. I hate Iron Will. I hate Rarity. I hate Pinkie Pie. I hate the townsfolks. I hate Angel. Well, I hate Angel all the time. But like, <laughs> it's it's it is a case of 
every character is every character is an a-hole. Every character is a bunch of they are a bunch of a-holes. And that is my biggest problem with the with that episode in particular. <clears throat> but the thing is that every character is awful because the writing is making them be so. It's it's one of those examples where the 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 plot is moving the character's motivation and not the character's motivations uh, moving the plot. Uh, because we have to have a lesson about Fluttershy not being able to find a middle term befe- between either being a doormat or a completely unpleasant. That's not a word. So what what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to botch it, hmm. and that's what they did. So I was very spe- skeptical about this comic. I wasn't looking forward to read it. I was very like iffy when it came to buy it. And while I agree with you guys when you say it is not so much about Fluttershy. I was so glad about what they did with the character of Iron Will. <laughs> I am so happy that they didn't make him... Um, they made him surprisingly likable in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Because he's a brute, he is rude, but he doesn't mean any of it. It's his nature. He will, like, he, you know, he will, like, mess it up. But he doesn't want to mess it up. He wants to make things right. So I, I that's... Perhaps my most favorite part of the entire comic is that the character of Iron Will is great, but mm-hmm. I'm getting ahead of myself. I think we shall go page by page and uh, talk about what the comic is about because we are already we 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 haven't done that yet. We can skip the first panel though. There's nothing worth seeing on that panel. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is funny. This is the very first time in the comics that we actually see Twilight Sparkle's new castle. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the 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 one the one thing sticking out like a sore thumb in the middle of Ponyville. Oh gosh! It, you know, in the, the sorry, go ahead. This is not a sore thumb. This is a compound fracture thumb that's been set on fire. <laughs> but you know what? In the show, like in the show proper, it was looking really good because there's a waterfall behind it and all. And I don't know. I mean, to me, in the show, it looks great. But over here in this comic. It, they still was there's they were still wondering where they where is the location of this tree house <laughs> oh, I, I i bitter about the tree house but or sorry tree castle now <laughs> but uh that's that's a topic for another episode mm-hmm. but yeah the first appearance and you just look at it and you think wow i mean wow, wow. <laughs> i i actually do feel bad for agnes garboska having to draw all those facets of a uh, crystal I have to say, in the comic, it's actually it actually looks a bit more um a bit more artsy. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it's because maybe because it's a three D painting and it's no, it's a two D painting and it's not moving. I can actually take a moment to appreciate the the way that it's built, and like I can see the thought behind it. If the color palette wasn't so clashing <laughs> with uh, with the rest of Ponyville, yeah. it might look better. But anyway, we are not here to discuss the castle because T- Twilight and Spike are like coming out of it, and they get thoroughly trampled by a mob of ponies. And why is a mob of ponies running away? Because Iron Will seems to be in town. So uh, Twilight gathers up with the rest of the main six in front of Fluttershy's house to prevent Iron Will from getting in. And right away, the main six are like, we are not going to let you touch our Fluttershy friend to get your money back. And Iron Will is like, I don't need her money. I I, I, I need her help. (laughs) Why? Because my wife kicked me out of the house because I am very rude and I have to find my inner pony. (laughs) Wow. And and Fluttershy is truly the best character in this uh, comic because everyone else is turning him away without even listening. I mean, this is the thing that drives me nuts about uh, putting your hoof down when they describe Iron Will as a monster. Uh, he, I don't agree with his uh, tactics, but he's not the one that made Fluttershy uh, say those awful things or behave so poorly. She did that herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yet yeah. they want they want to blame him because he's not a pony. It's he's a convenient scapegoat. Well, like I said before, uh, Iron Will is a motivational speaker. He says what people. How, how do I put this? Motivational speakers, the the way they think is, they want you to be more confident in yourself. They want you to, well, change your perception on things, change your personality. Like if you were a doormat before, he wants you to change and make you change for the better. And in this case, like for Iron Will in that one episode, Fluttershy was the doormat, and he wants Fluttershy to change and. 
a complete 180 of that character means more income. So yay, bring it in. Yeah, exactly. I was about to correct you. They don't want you to change. They want your change. <laughs> no, but honestly speaking, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, like Iron Will says, if she's not happy, money back. Yeah, but you know that with motivational speakers, it works as long as uh, as you believe it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And rather, I believe that the way that Iron Will works, like being rude and pushing people aside is a proper way of living, which nobody could believe that. You cannot go around life being a... Um, you cannot go around life being a dormant, but you cannot go around life being a... Brute. A, a, a rude douche nassle. Yeah. I mean, and it is. It, it doesn't work like that. You're going to end up pushing everybody aside or mm-hmm. people are going to uh, abuse abuse you. Yeah. That and is probably the only good part of that episode. Towards mm-hmm. the end, Flatoshai gets a, gets a balance of it. Yeah. And in this comic, Iron Will's getting... Uh, getting his comeuppance. His wife doesn't like his attitude and <laughs> the only person that I will can ask for help is Fluttershy. So, hmm. But to get that help, he's also got to put up with five other ponies who are just fueling his frustration. Mm. And, and again, it's just somehow, whenever it's a, not, a non-pony, our heroines tend to suddenly stop being friendly. The only yeah. exception I've seen is Gilda. <sighs> Paradoxically, something, something tells me that uh, something tells me that this happened after the well-to-do arc with the deer and all that. So they yeah. rabbit sore about minotaurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's bull. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, James hit kind of much. It is uh, well. It, what do you want me to do? I think it is better than thinking. I'm thinking, oh, they hate him because he's a minotaur. It's, it's like they hate him because, because yeah, he's a minotaur, and they are they are already uh, scarred after what happened with the with the deer. But no, I mean, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, it's kind of speciesist of these ponies to like um, immediately change the attitude and the way that they behave depending on the species of the of the character they are dealing with uh, as an antagonist. Uh, when it's not within the pony race, they suddenly are like, oh, careful, <laughs> watch your wallet. You may not get it back. <laughs> wow. It uh, is, it's true, isn't it? I mean, look at it. If you look at the at the uh, uh, precedents to this comic, you have a lot of cases where this has happened. True. Let alone, we're going to see it later on, on on Friends Forever 14 with Princess Luna and Spike, uh, the way uh, that dragons are treated in, in, in Philadelphia. True, but I, I think that's another thing for another day. And as for all the other ponies being racist, I don't know. I mean, the way Iron Will presented himself back then and now, it's warranted they're afraid of him. But anyway, we're, we're, we're digressing so much. Let's continue on. We're trying to hoard in all the issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Uh... Vlotashai is very open about uh, helping Aaron Will and giving him a hand about being able to control his rage. And I really do like this part of the, this part of the comic from Iron Will's perspective, but not so much from the perspective of everyone else, because he is not turning down any of the, any of the techniques that Vlotashai is offering him. Like, uh, here, recreate this scene from Beauty and the Beast with the birds and everything. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? And Iron Will is like, yeah, actually, this is relaxing. This feels good. Then he's trying to make a salad for Angel and Angel proves, proves to be a, a complete jerk. Oh, Angel is Angel. Angel is Angel, yeah. Silver, uh, they, you need a shotgun. I got it ready for you, man. Oh, oh I've got, I've got, uh, one. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're eating bunnies for tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the... but I, I personally, I think Fluttershy is just like, oh, you, you, you tried to take my money. Here's Angel. Oh, yeah. You try and keep your calm. I got to deal with this every day. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Okay. Here, here's the thing. Like, we, uh, I'm going to jump way forward and knowing Iron Will, he's a good chef. Like, he can cook. But Angel's attitude here is just like, no, you, you, mm, I hate you. I hate you. At, at, there are arguments that Angel was only hated for that one scene in putting your hoof down. But no, there's an attitude that stretches over the whole series. Yeah, this is ongoing. Mm. This is, this, this has happened several times. Common occurrence. 
Yeah, because if you remember back in season one, where in Dragon Shy, Angel Bunny like slapped or threw the carrot to Fluttershy, that, 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 yeah. well, that's, well, that's kind of funny. I mean, there Fluttershy was acting kind of clueless and he had an understandable frustration. These days, though, he's just a jerk for no reason. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> Citation but, needed. Check episode three of season five for further information. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh. But yeah, no, I um, no, I completely see where you're coming with this because Angel doesn't have any character for him uh, to him except the fact that. He's Angel, and he is supportive to Fluttershy when the plot demands, and he is a jerk with everyone else when the plot demands. He doesn't have rhyme or reason, and he is just a jerk for the sake of being a jerk. It is funny how you can actually get to Flanderize a bunny that doesn't have a single line of dialogue. Um, but Angel can be a good guy. We have seen him being a good guy. Do you remember the Kelpie comic? He can be nice. He yeah, just wants to be a jerk but... for the sake of being a being a jerk. Yeah, but sometimes, like, in this situation here, if he played along, and, okay, if he played along here, I was gone. Like, okay, comic over, my little pony, done, finish. Yeah, but there you go. That's the thing, is that in this case, the character was being moved by the plot. The plot yeah. wasn't being moved with the char- by the character. Yeah, but we can... In the next page, we can see Iron Will Seal tactic were not the same. <laughs> well, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, if if Iron Will had startled Angel with a loud shout, "Eat up!" That might have been a little bit. His reaction might have been more justified. But as it is, Angel is just still a jerk. Yeah, I'm. I'm still angry. I'm still angry. <laughs> I also may I say I love the fact that they avoid saying the word "dead." Right there, as he gets <laughs> cut off immediately. Put food on my head. Consider yourself. Uh-huh. Maybe it was too soon to deal with Angel. <laughs> About a hundred years too soon. Oh yeah. Uh, I know how to deal with Angel. Give me a shotgun. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. I will put his head okay. on a wall. There you go. There you go. Dealt with. Uh, Head cannon. Angel is a ghost now, and only Fluttershy can see him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but now they move to uh, they move to Sugarcube Corner, and uh, their Iron Wheels uh, people manners are being put to the test. <laughs> and he doesn't have the best manners. I- I'm actually glad to see that the first technique did work, but this one is not working at all. Uh, and it isn't working because Iron Will is rude by nature. Mm-hmm. I just love this his line. I'm getting paid for this. <laughs> like, well, yeah, he he's looking. He's a businessman first and foremost, I guess. Yeah, it's like, am I getting paid for this? <laughs> like, mm, wow, yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, and practicing good custom. Oh wow, uh, this is. Mm, let's just say this: Iron Wheel's method of business is not the same for ponies as it is to minotaurs or griffins. Well, it's funny. They they drive away the first two customers, which nice little. They take two of the wimpiest ponies in equ- in Equestria, uh, oh Poindexter and Twist. Yeah, <laughs> actually, it's kind of funny. This is the most Twist has gotten to say in a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Here's what I think: Fluttershy is setting Iron Will up with the most difficult scenarios. First, he has to cook for Angel mm-hmm. or prepare food for Angel. Now he's got to give customer service to Pinkie Pie. Not that's really. like mm, that's yeah. that's like ten warning sirens right there. But here's the thing: um, for Iron Will, or Iron Will asks Fluttershy for help to let her inner pony shine, and yes, true that. All the warning signs were there when Fluttershy brought in Angel and Pinkie Pie as a customer. And uh, it's one of, here's this, just this thing in my head, like, Iron Will needs to suck it up and take it in. Because if he can't, then ay ay ay. As, uh, from a teacher point of view, you usually give your students, um, uh, an exaggerated approach when it comes to dealing with uh, with a problem. Like it, it's not a, it's not realistic. So I guess putting uh, Iron Will against 
someone as meek as uh, Poindexter or Twist may have been intentional in Fladrosai's uh, perspective, like from where she was, uh, from where she was standing. I'm pretty sure she was like, oh no, this is a great idea. If he manages to be nice and gentle with these ponies, I know that he can be nice and gentle with every pony. Um, because if you can deal with these guys and be able to uh, be give them a satisfactory service, you can deal with anyone. Yeah, true that, true that. But apparently Iron Wheel couldn't handle the stress and his method of business is, well, let's say, that, unfriendly. That last, like. that last panel on page 14 confused me. Are you, are you seeing it, guys? Page 14. Never mind, I just finished. When Pinkie Pie, <laughs> Pinkie Pie walks away. Iron Will is venting his rage on a, a steam engine. <laughs> That's the thing. I, like at at first, I was confused. I was like, "Is there a problem with the page? Because that looks like like it's been erased or something." And I'm like, "Oh no, it's steam. It's coming out of his horns." <laughs> that is so confusing. Uh, it's it's strangely cool in a way. I true, true. I can some days I wish I had a steam release valve in my head. Uh. I love to see those cartoony uh, effects in the in, in in the comics from this show, and there are quite a few in this in this issue in particular. <laughs> but the next panel or the next page here, I do like because it's something that Iron Will is good at, but he takes it overboard. <laughs> and Granny Smith is a little too smug. <laughs> this, is, this, is like, this is again why are ponies so mean to this guy? No wonder I, he's aggressive. I don't, I, I don't think. Uh, Granny, okay, here's the thing F- from my point of view here is, okay, Iron Wheel is all strong and whatnot, and bucking apple from a tree, okay, yeah, uh, simple enough, let, I can do this, yeah, let's, let's do it, yo! Smacks into a tree, I think he used a bit too much force, and here's the thing, from Granny's point of view, bucking apple may look easy, but it's not. It's not. There's a Look tactic to everything. But look at her expression. I mean, she's delighting the fact this guy's lying concussed in front of her. <laughs> hey, an old person has their point of view. Yeah. That don't mean it ain't messed up. <laughs> uh, after what she had to deal with, the Flim Flam Brothers, I don't, I don't blame her. I just, I see that expression like, Granny, you, you cold girl. <laughs> That's you know, cold blooded. I think I am starting to see where this comic is coming from when it comes to the, the, the tone that they wanted to give it, is that if you if you think about it, this is like, uh, okay, I don't think it's so much about uh, race as much as it is about what the history that Iron Will has with the town. Is that, yeah, okay, fine, he only did affect Rattershai on that regard, but the impact that he did in the, that he did in the community wasn't very positive. Yeah, that could, wasn't, be true. Wa- could be true. Wasn't all that beneficial. So, and and the way that he is, his attitude, the whole shouty, screamy, oh, I am going to take you down to Chinatown. <laughs> like, that, 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 whole, that whole part of his persona, that is, uh, that is something that is difficult to change, especially when it's part of your personality. So... I think the way that all these other ponies are acting against Iron Will is coming out of a skepticism more than anything else. Probably. Because they, they don't believe him that he wants to get better. They don't believe him that he can get better. And so because they don't believe that he can get better, they, they, they don't see the need to um, uh, contribute to him getting better. So like, why would we bother? He's going to be like this later on. He's mm-hmm. not going to change. He doesn't have the 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 capacity or the the potential <clears throat> to be better. So why should we bother? And uh, but... Fluttershy is the I, I see it kind of like how they were uh, treating Discord. Like Fluttershy is the only one that can see it. But there's also the element of intentionally antagonizing him, which happens in the spa uh... Uh, scene as Iron Will's just trying to chill out with a cucumber on the eyes and a mud mask, and here's Rainbow. Oh, joy. Let's bring Rainbow into an emotionally tense situation. That will end well. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's Rainbow Dash, or also known as Rainbow... That's not a word! <laughs> oh, oh, that's not a word. It's oh. a, it is... No, really! Awesome as I wanna be! <laughs> Man, come on, Billy! 
Don't you know this by now? One of the things they love to do when it comes to writing Rainbow Dash is, unless she is the focus or the center of attention of the episode, she's a complete and absolute... That's not a word! I mean, okay, here's it. I, I warrant you that, James. I warrant you that. That is also true. But in a story standpoint for this situation or for this scene right now is Iron Will himself is not sure about this. Like, he, he says it. I don't know about this. Um, and... Getting the sales pony to convince him and getting Fatishai to talk him into it because, like, okay, we as manly men going to a spa may be a bit uncomfortable for us because it's letting your guard down, getting pampered is not what manly men do. And having Rainbow Dash there laughing at you, it, it destroys your confidence as a man. And Iron Wheel here, in this situation, I do understand him. And he is embarrassed by this event and is enraged. I don't blame him. Rainbow Dash is a jerk. Yeah, exactly. I don't blame him either. <laughs> see, this is, I, see I, I could agree that people would be ponies, would be hesitant to help Iron Will given their history and the negative impact he's had. But there's difference between not helping and going out of your way to antagonize. And I feel like we're seeing more of the latter. In these last few pages. Mm, I don't know. I mean, with Rainbow Dash... Okay, here's the important question. Why is Rainbow Dash there? She's still trying yeah. to get over her hoof uh, uh anxieties. Then why I am is pretty she sure she was, she was getting a beautifying treatment or something. Then why is she the one? Like, it's, don't you find it strange? Like, okay, honestly speaking, this is strange. Like, why? Because Rainbow Dash always dresses in style. <sighs> I, I think she has a special sense, kind of like pinky sense, but I feel someone's having a positive experience. I must go ruin it. Somebody's enjoying themselves without being judged. I'm going to go get judged them. I'm going to go judge them. Now. What, why do you think she was there with Princess Luna and Luna Eclipse at just the wrong moment? Uh, yeah. Because Rainbow Dash is a jerk. Yes. She can be a massive jerk. She can be really hateable and at the same time so adorable. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's the one that has lots of insecurities. But when someone else has insecurities, <laughs> I am such a hypocrite. <laughs> uh, well, and and with that, I don't will gives up. He walks away. He doesn't want to know anything about anybody. And yeah, it's like this. I I do like this moment when he's just alone in the middle of nowhere talking with Fluttershy. And I like to have that insight on on his life. Like the the way that he speaks about how his attitude is starting to rub on off, off of his son, and his wife doesn't want that to be uh to be what happen what ha- will happen to uh she doesn't want their uh, kid to become like their pa- their father. I like that. Yeah, that's good because who wants a kid that yells at teachers and friends and doing bad at school and whatnot? And the situation here is how do I put this? There's a degree of things that you should and should not do. And Iron Will's classes or motivational talks are not to be taken up to 11. Too much of any virtue becomes a vice. Yes. Ex- exactly. Like, I wonder if Iron Will was, was a pony, his good mark would be, what, a megaphone? <laughs> this is the best scene for Fluttershy with her just sitting and listening. And this is where her gentle nature can get ponies and other creatures to come out of their shell more than... Twilight's lectures are Rainbow Dash's declarations. <laughs> yeah, and well, this is a perfect, I won't say perfect, this is a nice scene between those two people or two characters because talking it out does help out a lot. And well, Iron Will needs uh, to talk to someone who can sit and listen and this is a perfect scene. And uh, and then the next scene is like the final test to see if what uh, everything that he's done can uh, can get him through a normal supper. And I have to say, in that first panel on page twenty one, oh my god, what is wrong with your eyes? <laughs> Whose eyes? <laughs> Look at the eyes. Oh, that one, six, that one. The this They're is so tiny. This is Agnes Grabowska's um, signature drawing when it comes to a faraway scene. She does that, and I think it's cute. They come out of Coraline. <laughs> I know, they look like buttons. Hey, don't be mean. <laughs> I'm not being mean, I'm making a comment. 
Yeah, we're saying the the eyes, they go. They it's just the pupils, and it's like whoa, that's different. <laughs> it look, it reminds me of Coraline. I can't help it if it reminds me of Coraline, Norman. Stop uh, judging me. <laughs> Stop judging us, Norman. Why are you so mean? Why are you so mean to us? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I don't want to review comics with you anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go make my own show in <laughs> comics and hookers. You know what? Forget the show. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, uh, Fluttershy gathers the main six and Spike uh, to have one, one supper prepared by Iron Whale, put into the test, see if he's able to put up with the criticism or with whatever uh, the ponies are doing or saying. And in the end, yeah, it proves that, yes, he can get through it, if not with a bit of eye twitching. Well, they're, so, they're, again, what? the ponies are being incredibly rude. You, Someone makes you a meal and all you do is criticize? Well, if it ain't apple pie, I ain't touching it. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, I don't know about that. I, the whole thing here with Applejack and EJ, they're a bit rude. And with... Rarity, she's critiquing. I don't know how or what the scene is, but to me, they're critiquing the food. And judging or critiquing a food is not bad, but having free food, you don't judge. When you're eating free food, you don't judge. When you're paying, you have all the right to judge. Oh, yeah. Well, well uh, if the food is, is physically unpleasant to eat, I mean, you just don't like it, you, you don't have to eat it even though it's free. But you still want to craft your message to be respectful. And that's mm. the thing that's killing me. These ponies are not investing the energy into well, saying I, I, something I, I in a constructive say, way. I won't say all of them. I would just say Applejack and Rainbow Dash because Rarity here, her line is, give me a second, um, pears and carrots certainly are an interesting color combination. She didn't oh. say it's not good. She just say that it's an interesting color combination because Pears are green, carrots are orange, and you mix them together. How would they taste? But I do like the concept, which is, yeah, who knows? And for Spike, uh, he, is, he and his flames. Ay, ay, ay. Meanwhile, Twilight's looking at Iron Will like, hey, you try anything, I will end you. Are you sure? To me. Yeah, look at the way that she's looking behind her. She's totally looking at Iron Will. To, to me, in, the way I look at it, she's eye-rolling at Applejack's comment or even Pinkie Pie's comment. The way that she, Really? Well, I'm, I'm seeing suspicion. This, A lot yeah. of their expressions... Pinkie is just being Pinkie, which mm -hmm. can be dangerous in and of itself. <laughs> uh, everyone else just seems... has these expressions of hyper-criticism, except... Innocent little Fluttershy who apparently is just having a bowl of soup. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the way I look at it is Twilight Sparkle rolling her eyes at Applejack's comment or Pinkie Pie's comment or something like that. And, well, Spike being Spike, Rarity is just judging the food for it, for what it is because she's a cantaloupe elite, as they say. I, well, hmm. All I'm looking for is a, is a point to say thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know who. Uh, yes. I think the closest we get to that is uh, any of them, either of them. It's in, in the last page, going, going. I think it all looks delicious. Um, I think this this wasn't so much a test of let's see how Iron Will's cooking is, or let's see how the ponies can take it. I think it's more like Iron Will being able to get through something without. Flipping a table, breaking through a wall, shouting, screaming, or getting incredibly, you know, mad. Which I think it's the problem. This is kind of like an anger management. Mm -hmm. This is putting Iron Will through the, the criticism filter and see if he's able to, uh, to, to deal with it. He's been able to take it. Mm -hmm. And I'd say that at the end of the comic, yeah, he's been able to, to take it. But, but this is, this is not a one therapy session. Uh, issue that they will be able to tackle and deal with. I mean, this is something he should be coming back and forth. So, yeah. however, the comic is kind of making it like that because it ends in the most abrupt. You blink and you'll miss it. Like, whoa, <laughs> when? What? The end? Already? I'm, are you sure I didn't? I actually I remember clearly. I browsed back and forth seeing if there was a page missing or if the <laughs> comicsology app was glitched. <laughs> it, it wasn't. That's how it ends. And I'm like. There must be something else here. Something must be missing. Yeah, I don't uh -huh. know. I mean, 
it's true that it seems an it looks like an abrupt end and it doesn't well rest the rest of Satishai's friend are really being rude towards Iron Will and only Fluttershy appreciates what Iron Will did for them and with that he was really happy and is going back home. An abrupt end really because I think in the show, if this was in the show, we could have seen at least a little bit interaction with the ponies and the food but I don't know, this reminds me of how they treated Discord when it comes to the dining scene. Yeah, and they were all being very difficult and rude then, too. Of course, they were also being attacked by the silverware, a little yeah. justified. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, not, only that, not only that, but they were dealing with um, Discord, uh, with, an, with Discord, who uh, had been an outright villain up until that moment of the, mm. of the show. And why would they trust him? I mean, Iron Will was only a one-time uh, bad guy. Discord was... Imprisoned in stone twice mm-hmm. before they decide to give him another chance. Although I do love Rainbow's expression as Iron Will goes in for the hug. Bring it here, Rainbow. <laughs> oh no, somebody help oh! me. Someone thinks you're a thug? Give them a hug. <laughs> oh no, help me. Touch, Rainbow, me touch. Ra- Ra- Rainbow Dash is like sweaty armpits, sweaty armpits. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, oh god. Ah. <laughs> Uh, but in the end, I, I do love Rainbow Dash's line. I don't know how you deal with all this crackpot, Fluttershy. <laughs> kindness and patience, Rainbow Dash. Kindness and patience. Also, a lot of drags. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I sick angel on them. Uh, <laughs> so true. <laughs> Throw angel at them like a bowling ball. <laughs> yeah. And with that abrupt end, the comic ends. <laughs> You know, we didn't really talk about the fact that Iron Will has a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, we, he we has know. a kid. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, that, we didn't, we don't get to see the kids, so. Yeah. But the message That's was clearly the there. The message was clearly there when, uh, he talked to Fluttershy one on one and the reason of, for him to do that in the first place. Yeah, he's worried about being a bad influence to his son. I mean, that is a very... Not, not only for the fact that he loves his wife and he doesn't want to be left out of the house forever, but he doesn't want his son... Uh, he doesn't want to be a bad influence to his son, which he clearly is. Yeah. So there is a very good, very very legit motivation for him to do, uh, to do this. And that is why I... I like, are we going to do... Uh, final thoughts? Yeah, let's do it. I think the comic's done, really, because there's no other ending towards the abrupt end. Like It's it's that. that is, that's it. Hmm. There's nothing else. That's yeah. it. Okay, so, uh, you know what? Let's let's do final thoughts, unless you have anything else to um uh, to bring to the table, of course, uh, mm-hmm. Silver. Uh, if there's nothing else you've brought, it's time for a final thought. Oh. My God, how did you do that? Ugh. Oh. I suck at writing them lyrics and rhyming. <laughs> You're good. I, I believe me, my mind is is swapping words left and right, trying to figure this out. <laughs> it's quite a fright. Sakura, help me. Uh, uh, You're good, anyway. So, uh, shall we do final thoughts here? Yes. Okay, let's uh, let's go for it. And uh, as always, uh, I am a voucher for. Uh, uh, I'll invert the alphabetical mm-hmm. order. So, Silver, go for it. So, this is a comic that shows Fluttershy at her best, kind and patient and able to hear the thoughts of others and sort of get them to open up in ways other ponies can't. The problem is that she's kind of overshadowed by Iron Will's antics and the very negative opinions of the other ponies. So, I, I feel bad for Fluttershy because I don't think the comics have given her a really standout moment. Uh, the best I can say is she, that scene where uh, the chupacabras and the and the other animals are all fighting, and she's watching it without blinking. That's, <laughs> it's that's so fascinating. <laughs> that's all right. That's that's her big moment in the comics line, and that was a good while ago. She's she's got to find a way to really stand out. Now I will. I enjoy him a lot more here than I did in uh, putting your hoof down. But again, I do I just look at how the other ponies are reacting to it. It's like, you guys are it, antagonizing him with intent. <laughs> this is not a good showing for you. From Rainbow Dash on down to Granny Smith, 
nobody is showing him even basic courtesy. The way I look at it is with Fluttershy, you know, with the whole characters here, Fluttershy is doing her job pretty well. And Iron Iron Will, on his part, he's doing not bad because with all the crap that he's been getting with all the main, well, with all the problems that he's been facing, um, for him to blow up at the very end with how Fatisha, sorry, with how Rainbow Dash is laughing at him, I say he handled it well until that point. And learning the reason why he wanted to change so badly was also a changing point for his character. Personally, uh, I still enjoy this comic. But that's because I I really engage with the character of Iron Will. I do have had moments where I'm, in my life where I, I've been called out on the way that I'm behave that I was behaving, and um, I was wrong for doing some things that don't need to be don't need to be explained right now. But I I I, I really like this comic and what they did with it. And yeah, I mean. It's, I, I like it. I like it. But I can see why other people wouldn't because the interaction of the rest of the ponies with uh, Iron Will, which, yeah, it it is the weak spot. If they were if they were a bit more pleasant, if there were like um like a character outside of uh, Fluttershy to give him a chance and just, you know, be pleasant with him. I'm pretty sure this will be a much better comic. But as it is right now, I think this is a this is an excellent comic book, and I and I really like it. Sucks that it's uh, that it's only twenty three pages long, and that the ending is so abrupt that you can you can miss it in a heartbeat. But aside from that, I think it's a very good comic. I mean, Agnes Garbowska is turning to be my uh, one of my favorite artists, next to uh, Andy Price and Tony Flakes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't wait to see more of her work in the future. True that. True that. Mm-hmm. So, James, what will we be reviewing? I am amazed that we are moving uh, that we move through this comic with such efficiency. I mean. This wasn't like what three hundred uh, three hundred minutes long or whatever. Oh, like on clock, we were about forty five minutes. We 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 weren't talking about this comic for like three hours, which is usually what's been going on lately with the comics. Oh yeah, so, so a very straightforward tale. Mm-hmm. And usually it with is. straightforward tales, we do we excel well. Probably not because we always like to go to a tangent. Oh well, but next week, next week we're going to be reviewing episode three of season five. Yeah, we're going to be uh, swapping back and forth between the comics and the TV show. It's uh, the episode called Castle Sweet Castle, written by newcomers Joanna Lewis and Christine Sonko. Now let's let's see how the debut of these two writers goes uh, in the overall show, and let's see let's see how how fun the episode is. Let's just say this. I know Ro won't be watching this. I wonder why. Uh, if you know him, you know him. Um, anyway. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked the, our dissertation on this comic book. And I hope to see you all next time. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. We will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. See you later. If your toy sale is a hassle, I'm not going to wreck your castle. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That's it. Uh, no, you have a book. I know you have a book of those. <laughs> Give me that. I need it. I need Never. It. <laughs> Come here. I got to do it. Bye.